on your textbook page one two three there is a session called the last session is called the method of mixtures which uh, is referring to the physics guide in your you know official study guide three point one uh, there's a line called applying colorimetric techniques of specific heat capacity uh, or specific latent heat experimentally so uh, this is basically the explanation on how to do the techniques of course uh, in theory we will do it in the physics lab but here I will demonstrate to you so right now um, I would like you to take a look uh, read through this section until basically the the next page and I will uh, give you the key ideas later on so pause the video now and continue afterwards Before I go through the textbook uh, context, I think the easiest way to understand what actually happened is uh, by showing you a simulation here. Um, so if you if you know what happened, uh, basically is uh, this is a method for you to find probably the specific heat capacity of a solid. Uh, it could be a metal uh, with the presence of water. Uh, the main idea is if you recall uh, how you do uh, in IGCSE to find the specific heat capacity uh, for example is that uh, you have a setup of say um, a beaker or, or of water or something and then you put, put some water inside and then there's a heater which of course it should be fully immersed into it so heater and then you got um, a joule meter to measure the energy and then that will connect to a power supply I, I try to simplify the whole situation so of course there actually should be two wires like this okay and then uh, the power supply will give out the current voltage uh, through the joule meter so that you can measure the energy and then you can see uh, the temperature so you can put a thermometer inside and so you can uh, use the uh, uh, equation of Q equals to MC delta T by measuring the energy from the joule meter, measuring the mass uh, from the water. I mean, of course, you can use electronic balance to measure it. And then delta T by measuring the initial and final temperature using the thermometer, then you can then obtain the value of C. So this is how you can do it. But the thing is, uh, this is easy. You can do it for liquid. But then if you have a solid, how can you do, right? Because Apparently, you can't simply use this thermometer to measure the temperature of this metal. Then you may say, hey, we could actually use those uh, infrared thermometer, right? Uh, but then in terms of heating up, it will be quite difficult. So how are you going to heat up with the immersion heater then? Because you can see uh, the immersion heater only are, you know, tr transferring the energy from the surface. So it is not as that easy to... Uh, fully justify the energy transfer because imagine there's a heater and then you say you have a block like this then what about the energy like on the other side or like at the other part of the heater right so then it will not be justified and cause it will just produce a large error so this is actually the advantage you can put it here uh, for doing the method of mixture to finding out the specific heat capacity uh, is mostly for metal, right? Because if you do it the traditional way, I mean, you learn in IGCSE, it won't work very well. So uh, let me show you the basic steps of how to do it um, using this method. So first of all, um, we assumed we already got the information and knowledge and understanding of how water behave uh, in thermal physics. So water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius and uh, the specific heat capacity is 4200 so we already know let's say we already know this and then we also know not, not degree celsius joule per kg per k and also 100 degrees celsius is the boiling point okay and oh yes another thing is uh probably you you will save yourself at a moment let's see i think let's see let's see so uh, what you have to do first of all I'll switch on the energy symbol mode so you can kind of see how much energy are inside uh, even though you can see there are lots of symbol here but that doesn't mean that 
uh, they are at a, at a different temperature. It's just simply water has a large specific heat capacity, so that's why. But uh, you can see the temperature, they are basically the same. So what I do now is, uh, I'm, I'm trying if I try to find out the specific heat capacity of the iron, what I have to do is, since I already know uh, how the information of the water, what I can do is I'll heat up the water until it is boiling. Okay, so this is the best thing because uh, for boiling, you surely know it's 100 degrees Celsius unless you are somewhere like at the peak or, or you know, at a different strange altitude. So immediately, immediately, I should put this inside. And then you can see the temperature got same eventually. And then uh, of course, in reality, it will take a longer time to kind of reach the thermal equilibrium. But then you can now take the final temperature and then uh, you can do some maps afterwards. So imagine you have all the information, then basically the whole equation uh, would then be let, allow me to write here that it will be same as what we learned here, uh, energy gained equal to en energy lost in that case. So by the equation, you can then tell what kind of measurement you need. So that will include mc delta t, mc delta t on the other side as well. Uh, with iron, iron, water, water. Okay, actually this is iron and water as well. So uh, that means you have to measure the mass of the iron. You have to measure the temperature change of the iron. Uh, for the temperature change, actually you could tell because uh, you surely will have the thermometer to measure the mixture. But then what about the initial? The initial would simply be the room temperature, right? Which you can also tell uh, if you put it for long, of course. Uh, mass of the water, you can tell, and you have to measure it. And that's why if you splash the water, that would affect the result. Uh, C already know uh, from the reference value, which again is 4,200. And uh, the change of temperature in water will simply be uh, 100 minus F. In that case, well, uh, for iron is uh, room temperature minus, sorry, F minus room temperature in that case. So um, at the end, you will be able, with all this information, then you can calculate the specific heat capacity of the iron. In case we get back to school, then we can uh, try to do the experiment. This is actually quite interesting. As for the setup uh, or name, calorimetry, uh, it's actually referring, I mean, it looks like a very strange and, you know, complex name, but uh, ultimately, uh, what it means is more like uh, a, basically what we, we just talked about just now, a transfer of thermal energy to find out, um, you know, certain information. And uh, when we, whenever we talk about the, the cup, then basically it's just a cup with a good insulation, like basically those kind of uh, experiment in the lab where you have a, usually um, polystyrene cup uh, which is more insulating from the thermal uh, from the environment and then hopefully it will get a more accurate result okay so this is the idea itself and uh, to be honest i think the test book uh, you should be able to read through all the calculation um, they just try to give you some numbers and you could uh, calculate through it so the basic idea of calculation is simply just this and I'm sure you know how to do it okay so that is all for chapter 3.1 and uh, for the remaining part in the question set are those um, those are exercise questions so you may want to do it and then you can watch the next video to find out all the explanation take your time